we're going to look at the classic physics problem of how high do you need the initial height of a roller coaster compared to the radius of the loop in order for it to make it safely around the loop without the car falling upside down. So let's take the hypothetical example of two identical tracks, or at least from identical heights, that will start with the same gravitational potential energy, and then they'll go all the way back up to the same height, one of which goes through a loop, the other does not. We will ignore air resistance and work non-conservative for these examples, although that's not realistic. You're going to lose some energy to heat due to friction and to air resistance. So we start with some gravitational potential that gradually turns into kinetic energy, and we're going to reach our maximum kinetic energy here at the bottom. And that should be enough kinetic energy to get us back up to the top where we started. But when we get there, we're going to be moving very, very slow, if not zero. It should be the same amount of kinetic energy you started with, which was essentially zero. Now, when we go to the loop example, we still have enough gravitational potential energy to turn into kinetic and then back into the amount to get us back up here. However, when we do get up there, we're going to have to be moving fast enough so that we don't fall down. If there's zero velocity up there, then of course we're going to plummet straight down. So we've got to have at least enough speed such that our centripetal acceleration is at least as much as gravity. Which means that our speed squared over r must be at least as much as 9.8 meters per second squared, which certainly does not happen if our speed term is zero. So this is not going to work. You won't be able to make it over this loop. You would just fall. So we're going to need to have some height, 2r we'll call it, that represents twice the radius of the loop. That's going to be less than our initial height, h if we're going to make it around the loop with any sort of speed at the top. Remember, we need enough speed so that our centripetal acceleration is at least as great as gravity. So let's do this like it's an energy problem. Our initial energy, which would be here at point one, we'll call it, is going to have to be the same amount of energy as we have at point two. The type of energy we have at point one is potential due to gravity, we'll call it potential due to gravity 1. And the type of energies we have at point 2, we're still going to have some gravitational potential, but we're also going to have some kinetic energy as well. Now, at point 1, we have mgh for gravitational potential, but for point 2, we don't have as much height. We have 2r for height. And plus, we have kinetic energy of one-half mv2 squared. Well, what was v2? v2, as you recall, had to be enough speed such that we are accelerating around the circle at least as great as gravity would allow us to. So then v2 has to be the square root of gr. Let's bring that back up. So the square root of gr needs to go in for v2, and that term is squared anyway, so that's going to leave us with uh, one-half m gr. So let's rewrite this entire line, mgh is equal to mg2r plus one-half mgr. Now look at every single term. Every single term has an m, and every single term has a g. So if we divide everything by mg, we're left with an expression for just h and r. So h has to equal 
2.5 R. When designing your roller coasters, just make sure that the height of your initial drop is at least as great as 2.5 times the radius of your loop. Now, of course, you're going to want to do much greater than that to account for all the non-conservative work lost to friction and heat.